Revolution. We begin on Nuke. This one is a battle oh. Uh -oh. that happens all false too start. often. False start. It's a false start, but Astralis versus Mouse Sports. It is certainly a, a, an affair that ESL Pro Leagues have seen time after time. This time, Mouse Sports were coming into this one as severe underdogs, but I think that dialogue has changed after the 16-6 you see in the top right. Yeah. You spoke of the curse, Alex. You know, you mentioned it. You said it haunts them because this has been a bit of a stopping point in, in previous seasons, but we didn't really expect it after. After map one, we're like, oh, no worries. Well, one of the things that happens as well with Counter-Strike is even though it is just another Pro League season, right, mm. where the same situation is going on down, we don't take too much stock in that. Normally we go, oh, you know, but they play this event, that event, they met yep. each other this many times. But if they lose again for the third time in a similar point of the tournament, then we still have to start asking some questions. Maybe there is something to do with Pro League, Mouse Sports and Astralis. We'll see. For now, though, they turn attention to this round in front of them. Five players pour through secret. It's going to be Glaive, and then it's going to be Device. And in combination, they do take down Carrigan. The pressure doesn't really stop, though. Robs and Frozen get a little bit distracted by one, but Estax made his position pretty subtly, if I'm honest. Just leaving all to Glaive to get all that attention, and actually, the T's aren't finding much as they now have to hit the brakes for a second. Oh. Very brave from Glaive to open the door straight into the tees, just see if anybody else is still home. And as it gets slammed back in his face, that will confirm that Mouse Sports are on the other side. They're waiting right now. There's a minute left on the clock and there's no rush. P250s for both Rops and Frozen can be deadly. Smoke and a flash as well. They could even work their way back up secret. But waiting to be presented with some jewels. Now Rops is tickling away as the tag goes down. Glaive. Is this already done with this round yet? He is now. Bemis finds his first and recovers the bomb for the second time. Frozen previously with a similar maneuver. He's making a lot of noise towards those vents and Dupree giving him just enough room to get a little oh. too comfortable. The jump. He gets the info. Dupree, though, gets the kill. So Astralis takes the pistol round and Glaive with a nice double kill dealing with that inner hit. Did you buy that knife yet, Alex? No, but it is the. I've just confirmed that's the blue steel in Dupree's hands and I've decided I like the way it looks. You like the way it looks? I got gloves yesterday. Oh, which gloves did you get? They were like, they, they look like the urban camo that I used to have on my SMG in COD 4. So I bought mm. it and it makes me feel like I... Digital. Yeah, exactly. The uh, digital camo. It made me feel good. They're not the most expensive. I think they're like 120 around that mark. Not cheap, obviously, but certainly not your your crazy skins that we see with some of these guys. Like, I'm sure those bad boys sent back a, a fair pretty penny. I don't know what it's gone up to now. I got it in day number one of that case coming out. So I was... Uh, Trying to get ahead of the curve. It may have gone down since I purchased. Yeah, Look, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, Chad. Mm. It's typically the lay of the land. Yeah, you drive yeah. the car out of the dealership and it immediately depreciates in cost. So <laughs> yeah. I'll have to take a little bit of a look. But the more we see use of it in pro leagues, people believe it's the deagle. It's and like the blaze, right? I keep it's like talking it up, so the stock's going smart. up. So maybe. Wait, is he manipulating the marketplace? No, no, no. Valve, Gaben. Oh my goodness. Call him uh, now. Insider trading from Chad Birchall here. Unbelievable scenes. I would never do anything so egregious. Well, we're spending a lot of time on these deagles. I feel as though Rush might be in cahoots. No, Rush has invested in uh, agent skins. <laughs> Rush. I, I did miss all of that. Yeah, agent skins. Hold yeah, on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Let's see if Dupree gets overwhelmed because there's a bit of a pinch, and he does. So this could open up a chance for a bomb plant, but I'm seeing S attack. Oh. I'm seeing hello. him die in the vents. Suddenly, a 3v3, oh, the nade him. brought it back through. Nice work from Device, but a better shot from Rops. This is game on. This is quite the second round. Mouse Sports making a statement. The fact that Rops has gone down the Flanky vent, boy. Yeah, a full flanky boy. He'll go secret and be able to stop the defuse because it is planted on mini side. It's currently where Glaive resides, so it's a flank as well. Chris J working his way up heaven. This could get sketchy. Really, really sketchy. Rops should have... At least one here, Magic confirmed. Glaive on the site with no can't chances. Save now. He can't even save. Mouse Sports pulling this one out, courtesy of Rops, finds his third, but Carrigan with the Deagle frag onto oh, West Attack. Away. And he does slip the net. Important that he gets away here because going into next round, I'd assume Astralis will be force buying anyway. The fact that Glaive holds onto that M4A4 means that it's going to be more deadly than it would have been. So Mouse Sports did a fantastic little play there to snatch one back and. Mm. Or get us into the ways of the force by wars. And now we have a little bit of competition. We've kicked off map number three, map one and two, as we mentioned. They're just warm-ups. Everyone was happy just to uh, 
have a bit of a beating, go down on their own map choice. And now we get underway on Nuke, the third and final map, one that has been fantastic for both these teams. Something that Mouse Sports have been favouring since the addition of BMAS, and something that Alex has pointed out has been great for Australis. They were 5-0 and at one point within the Pro League on this map. I think they're currently now sitting at 7-1. and one. This is something actually I really want to see, is Rob's pressure towards Ramp on his T side normally worked out really quite well. And we'll see how S Attack approaches this, because Rops was creating so much space for Mouse Sports mm. when he's having a good game. Now, we have seen the, you know both sides of this here. He wasn't you know, having the, the hottest of games before, but Frozen and Rops, if they both come alive on this map in the specific ways they play, you're going to have a very good T and CT side. Good spray, but not good enough. Does damage, but no kills. And now Magisk, Dupree, and Device. Eagles, five sevens, armor. Cool but you might want to save that. Yeah, and the reason they want to hold on to this is this round is done. The best thing they can do is try and scavenge some weapons from Mousebots as they exit the radius of that lower bomb site. Holding on to these upgraded pistols with armor and a little bit of utility there for Magus. What it means is going into round number four, they will be able to be more deadly than they would be if they were to lose this weaponry. Because going into round four, they get the $1,900 loss bonus. That is a save round for this team. They will not be able to purchase on in if they want to get those rifles out anytime soon. And they will take that save. And following into round number five, we'll see the $2,400 loss bonus and the guns will come out. So next round, it should be more of a non-issue unless somebody on Astralis with one of these upgraded pistols can find a multi-frag. And that's what we're looking for here, the details of Astralis with these pistols. Where are they going to be? What attack is Mouse Sports looking for? And can Astralis capitalize on potentially the lackadaisical maneuvers through a smoke, catching them off guard with a smoke of their own? I really want like a Carrigan Eco Cobra org spray down. Okay. That's my request. I'll hiss at the end if he gets one of those, okay. like a cobra. Uh huh. Don't know how cobras well, hiss. I did find like a, a snake, snake prop. Uh, yeah, we do have snakes room. in there. That's what we had for last one, was the RMR for uh, uh, the road to Rio. Yep. Yeah, Alex gave me a little bit of background, so I'm sure if that happens, we could crack out the props. We can have a great time. I love some prop comedy. <laughs> I love some prop hunt. The game. That's a game mode we got to bring back. Hmm. So just waiting out for any early aggression here at Mouse Sports. They're set up with a bit of a lobby defense. Four players locked and loaded as Magus splatters Chris J's head all over that back wall. And after he finds that kill, he now goes searching for even more, constricting the yard play by pushing up towards the silo here. He has all the sound cues necessary and will be able to call for his teammates if they have to worry about yard whatsoever. As we can see, Carrigan towards Squeaky, corralling back over now will be frozen towards lobby as well. And they need to find a little bit of room to move here because still three deadly pistols with Kevlar behind it. We were over towards ramp. They're rotating now, 45 seconds. Nothing hard. They're coming from squeaky side. Kerrigan does find the first, and there's the second. The York starts to frag, and Frozen's got the flank. Or oh, does he? Whoa. Device takes the head off. They react quickly, but S Attack dipping away. He wants a weapon so badly. It's oh. only the scout takes Bombs down. a brunt of damage Eight. for it. They do have the bomb in their grasp. A 25. scout shot hit. And 25 seconds, Carrigan, who else but Carrigan to charge in and take command of the lobby area. He grabs the bomb. <gasps> and S Attack hitting the flick of a lifetime. Not bad into Rops, but it's Device with only one point of health. A flash to try and bait them. Desperately giving some space, and he spots Carrigan. <gasps> Nurse and Carrigan. This is sketchy. Good shots. And a dude did a damage. He's got 10 HP. So loads oh. the lag, and S attack gets the frag. 4 HP. They had five all together. What a fantastic retake from the two of them. Oh. That was just Deagles. It started with Magisk, and it finishes with S attack. They were carried across as well. They weren't even invested into going into this round. So a huge one for Astralis to steal away. Monstrous. S Attack picking up that AUG as well, the best weapon they possibly could have gotten away with from that whole equation, at least as far as the economy is concerned. But the plant, the money for Maus, it will be another buy. This is just the tussle that we were hoping for. S Attack doing a great job there. He wanted the M4, he made the scout work, and Device doing a lot with that Deagle, putting oh, Mouse down to just spray. a tickle. Yeah, you could when see. When he got tagged to, to 10 HP, you could see his thought process was, here comes the push, one bullet kills me, and <laughs> oh, stress. All right. Chris tagged down the vents. Yeah, he's off and about. Took a bit of damage on the way, doesn't have the bomb, so do bear that in mind. This isn't just a vent dive to get a quick plant there. Simply letting Chris do what he wants. I wonder if it's noted. I don't know how much they saw of whether he went down or not. 
clearly took a fair whack of damage. Something that's always been interesting to me uh, in my nuke lessons with Chad Burchill mm. is that getting a player down the vents is one thing, but there's always a sound cue required for Chris to get any sort of flank. Now, at the moment, the device is found frozen just over the top of that smoke. And so first blood drawn, they look to descend secret. Chris has made sound cues in the meantime. He's broken the glass. I wonder if s -Attack heard it. Not sure. It looks Ooh. like he's quite unaware of this. So this should be free. He's going to let him live for now just to get the extra information if required and really, potentially Chris? a knife. No, just going to keep going. Rops knows where he is now, right? So if Rops can pivot and go for that kill. Oh, he might have the play towards ladder base as well. Oh, he's heard that for sure. Nice play. Catches device. Magis does trade. And that's a oh. shot from Beamath beaming across the outside yard. Dupree tucked in. 2-1-2, Glaive low sight, Dupree to upper. And Dupree does catch him, that's the bomb as well. Things get really awkward for Robs now. I don't know what he can do with the limited time he's been given. He's still walking. He wants Dupree, element of surprise is integral. That's the jewel, sketchy spray, costs him. And Astralis, they start to string together a couple consecutive rounds. That's two on the trot. Uh, 2,400 loss bonus right now for Mouse Sports going into the next round. They should have enough to invest here. Chris did fantastic to get two, and you can see Magus with that trade mopping it up just, but this was the showstopper right there. Bemis, massive shot there onto Magus. It wasn't enough to help them get across the line there for a third round. The scoreline now three to two in favor of Astralis. Back under where we go. AWP out. CTs will just be rocking scavenged AKs and M4A force as well as full kits of utility. Fun stat for us to consider during new here is that Astralis are first in the ESL Pro League for converting four versus five disadvantages. They convert them 36% of the time. And there's one right now. Dealt by Carrigan. Can Astralis overcome it? 36% of the time they do, historically. Ooh, that just kill. gives it a good go. That could have helped out so much if he got it. And then the power just comes out. This is very, very clear intentions from the T side. There's no messing around. There's no falling around. Hard to follow. S tag already posturing like he wants to slip away quietly and just not be noted. The device might be able to try and find a place of safety, even maybe cost on their gun potentially if he has to. Yeah, it's very quick stuff there for Mounds off of the opening kill from Carrigan. They capitalized, put pressure on that top site, have all five alive right now. We'll do their very best to keep all five alive going forward. Money hasn't had an opportunity to build right now for Astrala, so these saved rifles are important going into round number seven. Bomb now with roughly 10 seconds to go before we see detonation. Shouldn't be too many worries for Device. Actually has an opportunity to catch out Bemis. Frozen is low. There could be a second kill coming on through here. Smoke gets dropped. Bemis trying to nutmeg through this one right now. Chris J baiting with that AWP and Frozen's going to allow Device to live. So two carried over rifles. I think we'll just see an eco coming out from the side of things of Astralis as their loss bonus did trickle back down to that $1,400 mark and that's why they won't be able to buy. But this is that entry just catching the arm there of Glaive enough for Carrigan to punish. Rops onto Magus and the top site was open for business after that. Oh, they will be buying. So dropped across guns. Estatag's purchased on in and so is Device with Famuses and given those to Dupree and Magus respectively. Glaive on the snapping turtle. This is a big round right here for Astralis. We can continue this back and forth nature here on Nuke. Something we didn't have on the maps, Dust2 and Inferno, the openers of this series of the lower bracket semi-final. Loser of this is out. Winner goes forward to play Heroic later this evening. There will be a three-hour break between the end of this one and the start of the next, as per uh, CSPPA regulations, I do believe. How do you spell that? <laughs> Chris Jay throwing out the lock of smoke, flying through the sky, and we're ready to get this take underway. Seventh round of play. Third map, first of the day. The device just tucked in on the aggressive secret line, catching Carrigan on a very dry swing. So now they have the advantage. It does certainly not in weapons, but a re-smoke on secret, not giving Bemis any moment to establish info and to deploy his utility. Gathering. Very, very frugal with that smoke as well. Keep in mind we're down to now 40 seconds. You've now got a little bit more time on it too. To be incredibly reserved on how they're utilizing this. Chris has been dinked. They're running out of time and running out of options here. I'm not quite sure where they can finish. Back towards top they go. 
Wave's not maybe a bad target in all of this, but it is going to be the player in the bench. Device. That's going to be Device! What is this? <laughs> Finally put down by Robs, but his damage was done. Three kills. Oh, that was so cheeky right there from Device. Not only did he come at the vent, drop a nade, and then continue to pop his head up and down, spamming through. He got two kills from that. I want to, I want to see if we can see. Yeah, that's a perfect camera angle. Thank you. Dilip, 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 lip, lip, lip. Oh, it's almost like the the, the downward strafes counter strafing a little bit. It seems, it seems like he had a degree of accuracy. There. That's filthy. Very naughty stuff. Uh, let's have a little bit of a look here what's going on with the buy of mouse. We do have a timeout coming on through. The fact that we don't hear that lovely thinking music leads me to believe it is a technical pause. Typing as well. Rush, can you report Hello. anything in for us from the man on the ground? Server yeah, conditions? so I'm looking around. Uh, cables are all plugged in, but it looks like Harrigan is uh, just having a, a couple of minor issues. And um, mm. also someone's knocking on uh, a door somewhere. He's telling him to go away, apparently. Maybe a fan, Glaive says. So... Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I would hope that the fans wouldn't have their addresses nice. to their homes. Yeah, you know I the, doubt that. You know the binaural knocking sound that sometimes people put in oh, things? The donation have you ever, have you ever been caught street. by that? It's uh, really creepy. It freaks no, but me it, the hell out. I've seen it a couple of times and I can understand how, like... Ugh. Yeah, yeah. your heart just sinks and you just rip your headset off for oh. a second. It just sounds very realistic. Very good stuff. fan. that's the end of my TED Talk. Thank you for coming. Round eight. Time to see if those Deagles and Tech Nines alongside with the AKs for the ride can do anything. It looks like Chris J's got intentions. Very fast. The spray Damage. is good. And it looks like this round's over already. A blink. And you miss it round. Robs wants us to remember it, though, it seems. He could get caught by the push of device. Oh. And seems equipped to deal with it. He's only got 8 HP, but he's already found 3 using the smoke. Now what evades the nade. This is huge. This is my mute details, but he snuck through the smoke unchecked now. It's closing in on Glaive's location. He knows that tag was heaven's side. Drops. Even just a small chance to do the impossible. It's likely as tag will check this, but Drops isn't checking it and can't adjust in time. And so the eighth round, it was all Astralis until Rops arrived, but it is still going to land in the Danish camp. Five now for Astralis on the CT side. See this one again, because Glaive just holding down mouse one. Magisk was doing the same, and you can see it was just top side of a rush. With three AKs, a bit of a coin toss. It was very good diligence there from that of Astralis to make sure that they were clearing all the corners on towards the top side. That nade and the smoke, you thought maybe it was enough for them to go, oh, he probably hasn't walked on in, but they cleared their corners. They made sure he didn't get away. And uh, an important round for Astralis to convert as they're still yet to build that much of a CT-sided bank here. Taking a look on the other side of things, Mouse Ball oh, <laughs> will be taking the save. And Carrigan, oh, that grenade, 10 HP. Yeah, I don't know if that's attack is going to be able to get much more. He has dropped his molly and they choose to jump into it. But there's Chris J's Deagle filling the feed. Device catching a glimpse of one. He's going to land a nade onto Rops on the retreat. But with his Kevlar vest, he lives to tell the tale. Doesn't want that Glock. Rops doesn't need it going into round number nine. Lower they go. Crossfire set up. Tag. It's a bit of contact. There's Dupree coming in. The crossfire holds very nicely held. No more kills to be found. No more punishment to be made. And Mouse Sports now eyes on this round. So Chris J could buy the AWP, but it would be in the fashion with not too much utility or armor behind it, depending on what he values is more important. AKs are coming on through, and it won't be the orb. So five AK-47s for Mouse Sports utility. Almost flush. You can see they're just a couple of nades shy. Chris J, the only one with a full kit right now. On the other side of things, still no need for the big green for Astralis. Magus and Device will both be rocking those orgs. And Dupree, he has something to say. Hello. Frozen catching a nade. Dupree's just still threading the needle between two of them. Carrigan's found him eventually. All too aware of the games. Oh, Lord. And he just walks straight into Magus' grasp. He's always mini. Carrigan thought he had the timing. Esatag, oh my goodness, he's going to be such a rascal with this one. Tugs him into the corner for two. Chris J does stem the bleed, but I'm afraid the hemorrhage is already well and truly occurred. Oh, this is a big crack. Oh, oh frozen, fluffed his lines completely. Frozen falls, Glaive spins on a dime. Two on one, make it three, excuse me. All on to Chris J. One kill already. That was dealing with Esatag. And now he's going to try and get past Glaive to start with. Uncomfortable angle to clear in towards. 
Oh, that's as to why. You can see how tight that turning circle is while without trying to expose yourself to the other sweep. Very nasty situation. Glaive knew what he had to do. Seven on the CT side. Chad, is it alarm bells yet? Uh, Mousebots haven't been able to get that snowball going, which is usually what nets them so many rounds on their T side, but it's been a different paced approach. The fact that they had the force by wars within, I feels like, the first six rounds of the game means we haven't seen that faster pace towards Yard, the fast L block smokes or the quick ones down towards Secret. That hasn't been the game plan so far for Mouse. It's been more lobby based, more top hit based, or slower paced rounds. This time we might get that change up I was asking for, as here you can see the Secret smokes coming on through. Four on the other side as Glaive tags up. Carrigan, in game leader on in game leader action. Beatmus got dunked on as well, but they do descend. They don't have any nades, so they just need to work with the frags here, and the rotation has come on down. Esetag is on the scene, not opting to go into the window side, and that might be the right call, as Mounts already have the lower side in their remit. Oh, devices here as well, locking out towards they just the window. Know. Good rotations from Astralis and good kill from Magis. Chris actually hit that tag, and he's going to convert it onto device. That's Keeping the man advantage in favor of Mouse, but do not forget the it's rifles Kerrigan favor now. them. Kerrigan has okay. found Glaive on ramp. Now things starting to get sketchy. Missing his spray. It's attack adjusting nicely. Oh. He gets three of them in quick succession. Very nice work from the new Astralis gamer. And Magis to finish. He only needs the one and collects it. Eight, but very close to Mouse Bots. Starting to turn this entire half on its head. Doing so with only pistols. Can I see this again? Oh, not this one. What's going on? This was all right. It's an important one. Make sure the rotation is yeah, yeah. going to be Ooh. Okay. Ah, We're shaky. One. It's awkward. Oh, oh, that. Ooh. He's a snappy boy, isn't he? Yeah, big round from Esatag. They're needed to put on the uh, wiki keeper's gloves and <laughs> catch him out for six. How's that? Guns are back out. Mouse sports with that plant. They're flushed this time round. Smoke to allow progression towards the red box. Smoke's also over for secret. So back to the more standard approach of Mouse, 12 rounds into the game, and they need to start getting a few more on the board here. Down towards secret will be frozen and be Mouse. In the meantime, Rops has been tagged on up to 10 HP, getting out of squeaky, getting out of dodge, up the ladder he'll fly. And that's just gonna leave one man passive in lobby, that's Chris J. Carrigan overseeing the action of Yard, making sure no flanks can come on down behind that of BMAS and Frozen. And it appears that now that Mouse Sports have this early space, they're just gonna put the brakes on, they're gonna stand still. And so are Astralis. Nobody's rotated towards lower just yet. None of these sound cues to force the rotation. They haven't been pushed around. They're just standing tall. That Molotov might incite Esetang to have to start trickling down from ramp. And that would also have Device rotating from ladder to mop up his position. But as we can see on the radar, nobody's moving. Nothing is drawing these rotations. And the bomb's still towards Chris J. So... For now, they, they have nothing to work with at 45 seconds. They have their mollies, the smokes to still fashion something with, but as to the CT side. This won't be easy. Astralis have really come to play today. And their CT reads, their understanding of how Mouse Sports plan to manufacture this victory. It is top side, but they are ready. Up the vents though, and it's a good flash. Dupree returns his aim, returns his gaze, and does find the one. From behind, as the tag strikes, bomb found. One up the vents was Beamer, so he's still faffing around there. Robs could find Glaive here, or not. And that's the end of that. Nine to three, four still left standing. The bank of Astralis growing with every passing round. And quite the opposite to be said for Mouse Sports. This was well handled by Dupree, because there was three of them. That molly by the vents really slowed them down. I imagine that was deployed by a member of Astralis, but really well handled of that split the top side. Okay, so right now, the best mouse can muster on this first half is six rounds. But What's down... this by? Uh, look, it's another mouse spot special okay, here. Bemis but... had 3k for a weird amount of time. Yeah, they have that max loss. Bonus. And that was the best weapon of the game of the round lost. Uh, well, uh, Astralis are really rolling it back to dust too, it seems. They forgot about Inferno. So did Mouse Sports, apparently. <laughs> Spitty, respecting his elders, respecting his old teammate. Spitty sticker. And Dupree's gonna catch a Deagle bullet in the face if he's not careful. They're there. Tried to change his name once. Denied by our Lord and Savior, Volvo. <laughs> I have faith Gabe will come to one of our majors eventually. One of these days, he's going to walk on with his Crocs, walk onto the center of the stage in his polo shirt. And he'll wave. And he'll say, 
Counter-Strike, Source 2, Half-Life 3, and we're giving Machine a pay raise. That's what he's going to say. And then he's going to also say, but Dota's still my favorite. But obviously, he's, he's got a soft spot for Dota, but he's been recently besotted by Counter-Strike and its incredible really? uh, persistence wow. uh, in the scene, regardless of support. Of making money through Bang. the skin system. Uh -uh. Is a sound a gun makes, and device has done exactly what he needed to. Bemis on the cross. Oh. <laughs> On his shoulders, Glaive looking very, very nice today. I think he's got a bit of a ruler on his mouse mat, so has Rops as he reminds us what he can do. Oh. Chris Jay's hitting headshots as well, and this is our mouse sports manifest. It's all oh. star-studded or 1v1 to determine the fate of this round. It's Chris Jay's already hit one spectacular on the scout. Signature weapon looking to strike, oh. and he does quickly pull the trigger into Magisk. So mobile, so dynamic. He needs another, and Magisk oh. denies it. My god, this is a fast-paced, action-packed round of counter. That was like zero to 100. It felt like the round was all over. Strahler's hitting some absolute bangers of shots, handily dealing with mouse spots on this limped in purchase. And the next minute, Rops was like playing aim labs, doosh, doosh. cracking out heads. Chris J with the scout showing us why it's a bit of a specialty weapon for him. And they're almost able to pull one out of the back pocket here. They caught all of the frags. So big shout out to Mr. Rushley. One, two, three, four, five, six. Rops had the perfect position to deal with those rotations as well. Just not expecting two players to be down that vent as quick as a fireman down the pole. And we go into the second last round of play here for the first half. AK's back out. It's not the outside play, not too many smokes being used. Esetag has actually picked up a secondary orb. There's no way mouse sports are ready for this look. Forget the Esetag and orb as well. Yup. Oh, okay, very yeah. The literal jack of all trades. Yeah, I, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. They have three really viable orpers and they could play such sport. Oh, I mean, so he's the ramp player, so yeah, he can take it when perfect. he wants it. When he wants it, he can have it. Oh, just got a lot to do here. And actually, a very early smoke pulled out of him. He suspects right that it's not a wasted smoke and that's not a wasted spray. Oh, two of them. Two members of Mouse collapsing. Device has caught another frozen, wondering where it all went wrong. He could find Glaive here, but he's had his cornflakes today. Bang. That's the end of that. A fun cornflake fact for you. You know they were originally designed to stop um, people from self-pleasure. Cornflakes? Yeah. Yep. It was like a, it was a Quaker, and he thought that his disgusting, flavorless cereal would be enough to stop people touching themselves. It wasn't, and became a popular breakfast treat. Where did, did you find this out on TikTok? Because I found I saw it doing the rounds on Oh, God, imagine TikTok. if I've just made that up. Oh, no. no, I believe you're right. It was just doing the rounds as, like, a react to this fact. So uh, I was just curious where you found that one out. Um, it's an Instagram number uh, coming in, or... Ooh, well, let him do research. <laughs> That's right now. Yes, I was right. Goodness Nice, me. goodness. 19th good. century. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Praise be. I just Carrigan. now down. Carrigan on the way, Dupree. Oh. Good for two, then. Yeah, nearly a third as well. Device has finished off where he started, and now the flank comes in. Esetag is a nuisance. Zero. Just as you look to leave lobby, just as your attention is drawn elsewhere, Esetag is there to ruin your hair. Rops, only 37 points of health, and it should just be Glaive. Neat and tidy. Astralis, impressing. Here on the third, it's the 12 to 3 half, and they just need four to lock in that final.
just faster than you Just faster than you Excel Pro League, third map, Nuke, and we're here for all of your commentary and Counter-Strike delights, as well as your fun serial facts. Lauren Pansy, Scott, Chad Spoonge, Virgil, and myself, Alex Machine Richardson. We're ready to get this one started in the same way that John Harvey Kellogg got Kellogg started in 1894. 12-3, does look like Astralis have come to return to the form we found on the first map, a stomping, a shellacking, in the words of Chad Spoonge, Virgil. Two outside. kills for Frozen here, not... Uh... Oh, the 30 I was Here it comes. Here we go. This is the third, and then the fourth, and then he dies. <laughs> Not quite. Oh. Not quite oh. at all. Two have crossed. There's Magis plucked quickly into the kill feed. Dupree waiting for the investigation. Device is the one to draw his attention so that Dupree can swing, and that's exactly what he does. Finds it, and we're into a four-on-four four loss. Uh, Dupree's just powering forward. He's taking a lot of territory. No information can be garnered now comfortably from locker room, but Tag and the boys turning their attention towards the upper side regardless. BMAS, quite tricky to clear from here. No one coming from lobby could mean it's a little bit of a problem, but Chris J shows enough presence. They'll be curious about this now, worried about it potentially as Dupree spots them out. Oh, a little bit of a turn. Dupree doing it all in the pistol. He's confirmed Robs is there as well, and he's still alive. That's a huge amount of info for this round. Mouse spots, their chances are dwindling here. Dupree hits up there. It, yeah. Dupree staying alive after that fight from Rops has changed everything. Now Chris and Bemus are just sitting on their hands. What are you supposed to do? Twiddling their thumbs. Bemus, there we go. Makes the index finger work. Clicks onto the head of Device. And now Esther Tag looking for a 17. Chris J says no. Well, they've got it. And they have got enough time to defuse, I think, I assume. Yeah, get picked good. up. And it'll be Rops to grab that. So, oh. Mouseports forging the retake. It looked really problematic, but Chris J was the one finding the necessary frags. Well, we'll see that in the replay, I'm sure. This is the lovely double. Look at this. Quick reactions onto Kerrigan. Well, that plant and the kills coming on through mean that Astralis can cobble together a buy, right? See Dupree straight into that AK. He's given it on over there. They've dropped another one. So, two AKs on the floor. Deagle for Dupree. He can get Kevlar behind it. Head armor for the likes of Magus and Device. Glaive going to purchase him as well. There's a scout on the board. Very potent looking. He sided by right here. On the CT side, we've got an Org, two M4s, a Famas, and an MP9 for Carrigan. And tucking on into one of his signature positions will be frozen. Now, they have flashes to deal with this. And they have smokes to isolate if they want to smoke towards the windows and main. Glaive will be lining up that main smoke now. And this is a, a kill that they could almost go for off the bat here. Drops is trying to help on out. Denied. So that molly's fantastic timing. They need to press forward now, Astralis, if they want to use this to their advantage. Drops will be able to repeak in a moment. We have seen Frozen's position paying off a lot as of late. This is something that's become flash. very common for it. Let's see if they're ready to clear it. There's the flash. It looks so well orchestrated Ooh, on this T-side. Drops, here we go. Timing's everything. He gets it. Right, he's taken a lot of damage, but he's hindered yeah, that, he hit, that pressure. Hit the no-scope with that scout. Really effective damage inflicted. And, oh, oh, he's revealed at the sound cue. Firing off the shot. Chris J is going to be unhappy with that one. Carrigan as well towards Mini. Three remain only with well, a one AK. His romps rotates back in all the way from Secret now to the top side. It's tucked in on the squeak side, Ben. Looking good for Mouse Sports. Don't want to get too pushy in ramp. They have, but nets them the kill. Oh, Glaive made a sound cue, making it very clear. He's hunting Chris J, and Chris, with that information and with that orc, has found the first. Yes, the tag responds. So, a one versus three with only 20 seconds. There's no one to stop the plant if he was to go now. Oh, sketchy. It's not nice doing this. There's oh, so many. Fake. Yikes. Yeah, gets the first. There's another to come. Carrigan to peak on this one. Uh, shot. He's got no time. Any no chase? No time. 
He's given it a good shot and does hold on to the AK. So just know all the financial damage that he just did towards Mouse Sports. Venus will upgrade there to that M4 from the Famous. So able to pick up a round and the weapon. But they isolated Frozen and his tendencies off the bat there. You can see that one coming from a mile away. As soon as Main was smoked on off, they want to try and clear him out because he is isolated in a position where it's difficult to help him. And now this is where the question is from Astralis. Do they just want to use this AK, take a save on everybody else, do more damage again for the economy, or do they want to force by backing them? The reason you can start making that argument is because they did do so much economical damage to Mouse Sports. Right now, we have four players who will have to reinvest. BMAS could potentially drop across the gun, and that's going to help them get the buy on the board. They will be able to get everything they require, and Astralis, they want to stand and fight. They don't want to take the save. They don't want to play the percentages right now. They want to take the game away from Mouse Sports within the early stages. We're going into round number 18. They've got a Scout, two Deagles, and a Mac 10 with that saved AK-47 on S attack. Utility does look good here. You could see the standard smoke wall for secret. The L-block smokes as well as a possibility. Molotov towards main. Smokes, squeaky naded open. Very standard exchange of utility within the first 15 seconds of the round. Frozen this time tucking into a safer position, playing from main with Overseer of Chris J on the scout up towards the heaven position. Four, make it five of them. All heading in this direction. These seem to have a good idea of what they want to be doing. It's very similar to what we saw in the round prior. Frozen in mini this time, smoke deployed. No one to be concerned about in warehouse. Tag the hero AK. Chris J. Slouch on the scout. Oh, the flashes are just good enough, but that's S to tag the primary target. Found and tagged down to 12. Now, the other part of that would be device as well. I'm trying to keep my eye on what he'd be oh. doing with this. Another tag for Chris J. <laughs> Glaive gets one back. Oh, oh my, my, I thought uh, it could have happened. I would have. Had things to get some cornflakes. Uh, things and stuff, yes. Yes, cornflakes would have been required. Frozen's got himself all of the necessary frags to win this round. Glaive, however, wants to change my mind. Device 2 walking on the upper side. If he catches a headshot onto oh, Bemis, oh, oh. could give Glaive's Glock a chance. And it has! Sorry, I can't quite Holy believe it. I didn't believe the words that were coming out of my mouth. Now, unfortunately, though, Carrigan has caught the bomb. And he even knows where Device is coming from. So this ends with a leader's double. And a sixth for Mouse Sports. Looks like competition is on to this final map. Frozen coming alive is important here, so that triple spray down might give him some confidence. He was down and still is down towards the bottom of the barrel right now. Frozen with six kills, seven for BMAS. Then you've got the remainder of the three players on Mouse in double digits. But Frozen throughout the Pro League and especially some of their tighter matches has been a clutch factor. So him coming alive here against Astralis on map number three is important. Now, Astralis can just take a save next round. They will be getting up that 3,400, considering they haven't won a round right now within this second half. Just the Deagles, Smokes. They won a round with a similar buy. Actually, their only round on the T half of Inferno was with a similar buy to this. L Block Smokes being lined on up. Here comes Rops's first challenge to, to be specific, and he's handled both with ease. The first down to 50, and Device takes the brunt of that M4 damage. Frozen in the credit card could have some contact, and he does get Magis down. Glaive trying to trade, can't do anything. Good to see Frozen waking up, a necessary component of this Mouse Sports defense. One for one, Rops will finish us off with a triple. So when, he, when I said, how do Mouse Sports do it, after re le reading the list of opponents Astralis had bested on Nuke, you mentioned Frozen. It seems that Rops also can fill that void. But Frozen required as well for the other side of the map. At the moment, that's his seventh we just witnessed him find, and his eighth as well. So gonna need to see a little bit more out of the Slovakian. He's just in such a key position at the that's map. a sweet game in setup that, that young see fella's that? got. Yeah, the young guy over there. Young man, wow. big ups for the gaming setup. I, I've got maybe a young star in the making there. Uh, Rops only has a deagle. Rops only has a deagle. Doesn't I'm seem 4K. to stop him. He's actually decided to get himself an AK-47. 
<laughs> is this is this the new theory? Uh, it's is the Mouse it? Sports. Yeah. It's Mouser, the Chris J special. Well, yeah, Mouse were already running this last season of Pro League, but it was Chris J every single time. Uh, it's just it's obviously spread. Yeah. It's contagious. So it's just wild to see going into it, considering the scoreline of the game and the just first ran half. Into the bloody ninth room. <laughs> Radio batters one. Sweet Rops is still going. Couldn't get a third, but two was good. Did the damage, but now the lower site, the lower level should be able to facilitate a plant pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, they've knocked down the uh, King Kong. So no crowd control utility left for Australia. It's just flashes to work with here. On the other side, Chris has a smoke, but patrolling the vents will be device. And he might be able to find Carrigan dropping on down if the timing is right. Waiting for any stragglers of Mouse is now frozen, clearing out towards secret. Bomb, quarter way ticked. Uh-oh, this gets awkward for Device now. He's missed his nose cope as well, missed two of them. A wiggle of frustration puts it all onto Magisk. Time's well ticked. If he could just knock him off the bomb, but he gets hunted down. Chris J had his dear stalker on, and he solves the mystery. It will be an eight for the Mouse Sports boys, and that gap's getting competitive now, Lauren. Yeah, this is getting substantially closer. How many is this in a row now? Uh, that's Five? the fifth. Yeah, yeah. 12-3 on the half. Yeah, so, I mean, back-to-back, -back, it's it's it's... It feels close though, because we've had what a couple of plants in there, you know, nothing too crazy. But it's forced by wars in the beginning as well. Yeah, it has felt a little close. But I mean, if mouse spots are pulling off nice retakes, they're not being caught off guard by anything. They're able to shut down any early sort of information finding facts. It, it's all looking quite decent. Yeah, for mouse spots. Well, that plant was important for Australia. Means they can get the guns back out. No alt for device this time round, but the rifles are plenty. And same situation. We're not seeing. Too much of a pace come out from Australia here within the early stages. That last round, they went a little bit quicker because of Rops's push. They thought, ramps open, we'll get down there as quick as we can. Well, Rops had rotated before they could make their way into that window side. L-Block Smoke's being lined up yet again. And some of these mid-round approaches from Australia tend to be a little bit slower when they uh, saunter on back in towards lobby, just limp their way out to top side and hope they can find some picks. But let's see if there's any intention behind this L-Frame. Over towards Secret, they cross four of them. Mm. They jiggle towards Heaven, they just tucking this? under. Yeah, Chris can see that very clearly. Okay, well, that is an opening kill, and that's a positive step for Mouse Sports in round 21. Frozen this time on the lower side of things. Molly Dow, he's normally good under this pressure, keep in mind. This is where we've been singing Frozen's praises, seeing him clutch from here, seeing him do all of what was required. Now he's got a lot of players showing potential presence. Rops is here too. Oh, he flubbed that smoke. That actually works in Astralis' favor. Yeah, they could plan in it. And that's the tank has caught Carrigan's lurk, so now they could pivot up. Oh, okay. Rops has found a crucial frag. Now Glaive really is going to try the upper site. Bemus, a lot to do. Three players hunting him down. Catches Magisk. Perfect timing on the peak. He hears the steps oh. and takes the head off Glaive. Mouse Sports are here to play, folks. Chris J confirms it. And Astralis far from a guarantee into the finals. Six straight. Six straight from Mouse Sports here. Bouncing back the first half. It looked like it was done. It was another one of these blowouts. Well, three. Yeah, that's all we've been seeing today. We've had blowout halves on three consecutive maps. But at least this one's competitive. At least this one isn't done and dusted just yet. B Mass showing his young mechanical ability with some massive shots and Carrigan riling the boys up, getting them fired up, getting them in the game because they can take this away from Astralis. They've lost in two consecutive semi-finals to Mouse. Will this oh. be the third time? It's feeling like it. This this should be 10 rounds, double digits. Mouse. Oopsie boopsie. That's not what he was looking to do. Oopsie Obviously, boopsie. Uh, main smoke would have been ideal. But uh, all around, Glaive already accepted that this round was not won with a high likelihood of conversion. Rops holding this tight line, especially when he's got an orper there to draw their fire. Fires off a warning shot, means Rops won't be the first to be checked. And I say that. Vice was waiting for him, and he does strafe into the Desert Eagle. Or tag from S attack, not enough. Oh, oh, and Chris J just straight up wall bangs him. Finishes off the job of Rops straight through from hell. That is 
One way to secure the round. Poor old Dupree wondering where it all went wrong. That's the bomb though. He can't Hold flat on. here. Have you guys not heard the story? What story? <laughs> Dupree, the 1v4 to save Astralis from the comeback? It's not this one, obviously. It's but, no, but uh, that does uh, sound uh, like a does, story it, I'd be it, interested yeah. in. Is it how how ancient is it? Is it an audio is it an audio book or it is future. available on all platforms. Just all platforms. Yeah. All platforms. Okay. All platforms. Someone, someone tweeted me the other day, chat, mm. saying, are we bringing globally offensive podcasts yeah. back? Oh, well, we should. Um, Why don't we grab Rush and do an episode at some point? Cool, I'll, I'll go. No, obviously. Die. I mean, we, I, I he's, been, he's been trying to get his boyfriend on. <laughs> and then we can get... What? What? Sorry, I don't know what I just I said. I didn't bring all my mics, but we can make it work. How many I'll have you got? More. I just brought one, but I I'll have more. three spare... Proper ones. Big... Good enough audio, yeah. like okay. I can bring over. Well, something we could do. I won't do it for rushes. Uh, Why? Uh, Why can't we have a four-man episode? Well, yeah. because I'm only there for the headphones. It feels. Wow. Ouch! I was just mentioning rush first. So sensitive. Just to sit in the front of the car. Three smokes <laughs> on the L band. I'll be taking the back seat. <laughs> All right, Chris J's not up heaven with the AWP this time, so an opening won't come through that avenue, but down towards the lower site is where he resides, and that's exactly where Astralis are going. Carrigan unloading some bullets, seeing if he can hear any tags of damage if Astralis wanted to go close over towards Warehouse, but it'll just be straight on down. Note the remaining two players, Magisk and Esatag. Smoke lined up, Ooh. ready to throw, but they have to push Chris J back first to at least put the idea of doubt in the minds of Mouse. Have we seen Chris J down here as their first port of call yet? I'd They've been mixing it up. Frozen's been it's down been there. Frozen's been the down door there. And, mm. and now we've got Chris. So the AWP is very, very good for this kind of an angle. Excited by this then. I want to see how they approach the street. As I said, I think last round or maybe the round prior was just that kind of like door jump, you know, just jamming your head against the top bar. But Chris J now set up well for the first, going to fall back. He Chris wanted to stay as welcome. I felt like he might have wanted to be around a second longer, but he's actually up on the catwalk Timing. that wraps around. 37 seconds now. Uh -oh. You're going to see Rops fighting Magus, and this is all looking very problematic. Chris J elevates position, finds device, and the last two have nowhere to go. That's a great shot from Dupree, but he would have to go for the 1v5. This, perhaps, was the story you were trying to tell me, Lauren. The 1v4 from Dupree to save Astralis. It was just... All about Dupree's first frag onto Bemis. Does find it, but it cost him a great deal of his health. Down to 40 when Frozen found him. The defuse comes in, so we've got ourselves a real game. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just joined us and you're thinking, oh, okay, so I guess we've got a close third map. Well, it was a 12-3 half. It was a 12-3 half in Astralis' favor, and that 12 has not moved a muscle over the course of the last 30 minutes. Why did Mouseports get good at CT sides? Eight straight. Yeah, it was all the T sides that we've been praising throughout their run. Look at yeah. that. Rops is seriously Ugh. channeled in. He's, he's in the flow state. This is some wild stuff here. I can't believe they've won eight in a row right yeah, now. Yeah, on CT nuke, I mean, sure, it's CT nuke, but it's Astralis' T side. Don't forget, Chad has been regurgitating keep them under six for their T side for the last three years. And well, at this point in time, Mouseports have kept them under one. I, I don't know how they're going to break the curse because it feels like all those effects, all those words that kind of made us go, no, it, uh, the map pool, it should be two. Oh, no, it's a new era, a new Ooh. day. And the same old tags towards Magus. He's oh, feeling I'm... worse for wear than aid. Didn't quite find its destination. Oh, and Magus just about found his. So this room taken being so quick on Magus and that low HP is a positive right now. Frozen, this is what I was talking about. He has a lot of work to do here. The youngster needs to step up. He needs a minimum of one kill here. And he gets it. He's played the corner. He's played the angle. They look for his old tendency and Frozen wants more, doing damage to the device. We have Magus and device now very low. Things are looking good for Mouse Sports here in round number 24. Yeah, making it costly. Don't forget Chris J tanked up Magus at the start of this round as well. Robs has rotated in from his Ramp room. Oh, in that close corner. If Glaive executes everything perfectly, he won't make a peep. No one's heaven, so there is a gap right now. Who's top site? Is anyone back's turn? Be Beamass. He always plays the bomb boxes. Carrigan catching device, and now S-Attack and Lobby is under threat as well. That's going to incite Glaive to have a look, and he oh. does get them both. Huge work. 2v4 made 2v2 in the blink of an eye. Bomb can go down. He's staying up there. Magis, given the responsibility, Chris needs to find the timing. And that's the perfect timing. Does flank into the glaive bottom. Rob's coming up from heaven as well. Magis to clutch. He hasn't got the health for this. He'd need a clean kill right out of the gate onto that heaven player. Rob's just biding his time for Chris J's info. That's the info. 
That's the push, that's the frag. Mouse Sports remain undefeated, untoppled, unscathed on their CT side. Well, you just look at the string of the last four rounds that have been won for Mouse Sports in a row, three of which they had three players remaining. This one here, only the two, but it feels like they're handling it quite well. That was only made possible by Glaive's multi-kill from up top of ladder here, and he did that as quick as you like. He even had the rotation cut off, but Chris J slipping the vent, finding that frag, put all the pressure on Magus, and then it was just teamwork, and now it's tied on up. 12 12, we've got a real game today. We said stick around for Nuke. This is the reason if they go flawless here, if this is 16 to 12 for Mouse, this is phenomenal stuff. Yeah, I have no doubt this will be a game we reference for the entirety of the coming months, the rest of the year, if this is the Mouse Sports finding their CT sides in the lower bracket final. Heroic waiting in the wings for their opponent. There will be an allocated break between this game and that final, but Heroic will be stepping into the realms of against Astralis or Mouse. A lot of people expecting to see the drama reach its uh, peak. It's Astralis and Heroic rematch, but Mouse Sports making a strong case to change the flow. Look at this, 12-3 to 12-12. Now it's anybody's game. If anyone, it's Mouse Sports that hold the cards. That's been one, two, three, four, five successful retakes as well. It's not like Astralis haven't been getting the bomb down. No, and Astralis just invested three smokes in their bent elbow wall towards Yard and, and didn't use it whatsoever. They're just hiding in plain sight. They've got behind main control and they're also waiting over towards CT Red. And, and what this is telling me is that it was to force out the rotation and the danger man this time round towards the lower side of things is frozen. He's been taken out of the equation. Looks like we're going in for a top split. So you got to keep your eyes on Carrigan and BMAS. They're in. Made it in. Kerrigan holds the mouse one. Glaive so low, but he needs to reload, but held. And Mouse Sports are doing it again. The top side hit. It just fumbles. It's all onto Esatag. And he's off to ramp. He might be able to get to the lower side. You know that Road Frozen was caught. There's a lot of space. There's a lot of time. 20 seconds is more than enough to be getting that bomb down. Okay, yeah, Robs has just dipped through secret, so he's gonna be there pretty quick. Now. Door sharp, but look how fast he's oh. as attacked. Stands no chance. It's oh. an execution with the firing squad against you. They've taken the lead now. This is 13 coming in for Mouse Sports. Oh my lord, Astralis. <laughs> There's a timeout. Where is it? This Come is on. so peculiar. I mean, this is the carryover from, from Inferno, right? Yeah. You know, we, we saw how the Astralis can, are capable of looking this way. And on the T side again, they are falling. So nothing but a whisper, a whimper. We haven't heard anything out of Astralis this half. If we could bring up the round recap during this timeout, I think that would help everyone just to understand exactly what we're referring to. Yep, look at this. Now, I want to note the four plants in a row just here. That is important because max loss bonus is in play for Astralis. That means $3,400 coming into their bank account round after round as long as they continue to lose. The plants then elevate their cash. It pushes them well and truly over that threshold so they can buy everything that they need. Now, the timeout here is important because you can only keep smashing your head into a brick wall so many times. And the Astralis approach so far, it's not that it has felt uninspired. There has been moments where it felt like they could have stolen some rounds away, but Mouse Sports have capitalized. Astralis haven't been able to build a rhythm. Them. They haven't built strats that they can work off of. They haven't been able to now force Mouse Sports around the map with any rotations because Mouse Sports have been playing everything perfectly. So it's a gear change. It's quick. Down secret. They trundle. Two. Very, very fast. The timing almost perfect. And oh, two more damn. will follow. So four players already towards the lower side of things with a minute 30. Okay, Frozen's got to know this, though. He's got to be so aware of what's going on. Carrigan's just dealt with a big chunk of damage. Now... Frozen can maintain control. He's got support from Chris J coming in, readjusting well towards ramp. And now the T seem to hit the brakes for just a second. Frozen taking damage. Oh. Chris J misses. Oh, he's been punished for that one. Dupree's going to grab hold of that with both hands. Finally oh. a chance. The gear change might have just landed them an opportunity. Yeah, they're feeling the rhythm. They're feeling the rhyme. It's Counter-Strike time. Carrigan does spot her another. Magisk should be able to finish that off, and he does. So now it really does look like the end of the spree. Beamer's trying to change my mind, only the one. Robs. If he finds device, we're cooking. He oh, he caught a glimpse, and he won't get a second look. That is the first T round of Astralis' new care. Wow, okay, back time we go, 13-13. If I'm mouse sports, I would be worried about that approach coming through one more time. If you want to shut this down so they can't just cross as quickly, either try and disturb this smoke wall so that Chris J can be set up to find a couple of kills, or get in their face. Because you can see it was a minute 30 on the clock, four players from Astralis already towards that lower bomb site. a player over towards lobby to deal with the rotations down the vent as well, and that was as simple as you like. Smoke's being set up, here we go again. 
It needs to be aggressive from Maus if they want to stop this. They have Frozen. to play ahead of it. Oh, I thought Frozen might have pushed that. He wasn't in the end. I don't know if there's any disruption Great to nade. this. Lovely nade. Mage is going to take, I guess, the lion's share of the damage. But looking at Glaive and looking at Dupree, this isn't all the same secret. Look, they're trying to press pressure Chris J, and he is more than capable of handling that. They didn't get faked out here, Mouse. They stuck to their guns. They didn't rotate lower. They didn't try and go for a fight towards Yard and put their resources elsewhere. They went with their standard hold and they made it work, putting Faith in Frozen to deal with the players coming down towards that lower side of things. And he wasn't even tested whatsoever. And now it's a four on five disadvantage for Astralis here. That percentage, Alex, 36. 36.1. So if they're able to convert one of these here, it could be very crucial in Astralis winning this map. Running out of chances now. You're absolutely right. This is the business end. Just three, make it four rounds. You know, this is all to play for Magisk. You can hear that. He will take down a very loud Chris J. He's got a lineup for us, but he wasn't ready for Carrigan on the hut. Does get traded. And that's a crucial frag again. Bemis has been playing the most boring game of CT side nuke, having to stare at this silo, but it works. And Rops can finish the job as S attack left. Oh. Does well to find him. He dunked onto Bemis, but Frozen saves the day for Mouse, and we find 14. It came down to the 1v1. Essa tag gives it all she's got, but it's not enough. 14. And now look at the money as well. Yeah. You can see that this, is, well, this will not be an idyllic buy. A timeout called for Astralis as they realize that this could be the third time their playoff run of ESL Pro League is stopped short again by Mouse Sports. I haven't seen Chris J reacting like that since he was on the stage. He's back. He's got the mojo flowing. They're feeling it. The adrenaline high. Teamwork at an all-time high. You and the four human beings, you've been working every day to improve, to justify the salary, to climb the rankings of everyone else in a similar position in the niche situation you find yourselves in. And now they can do it again against Astralis. One round is all Astralis have to show for this T-side. S-Attack, Dupree, no more high fives, no more smiles. This is business. This is exactly what you're paid to do. Overcoming the odds, though. Mouse Sports have managed to get this more than competitive. If anything, it's Astralis now on the back foot. They're bloody. They're wounded. And they've got round 28 to play. Smokes, flashes. Oh, big and gap. And a miss. I think there was a Molly out there, there at one point, so this could be... But surely everyone Unforced knows that error. Frozen's going to be holding the gap. You, 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 oh. Well, now they know. There's another Amateur smoke. Smoke it, reinvest Molotov, then dissipating as they do work their way, or at least in, show the intention of working down towards secret. It looks like Frozen will be the first to respond to this call. No one else can get there, though. The only smoke left is on s -Tag, and he's over towards T-Spawn, just dealing with that lobby. Throwing his, his, his lockers. Interesting. Christie's going to lose his vision here. He wants the info. Oh, he doesn't want to back from oh, this. Oh, the flash is a good two. Chris surviving. He's just going to have to hide in CT spawn. They're throwing util at him, but it's Astralis still with a lot to do. This is a peculiar round here, and they're descending now. It's down to Molly's. It's going to be a ramp crush, and Carrigan's taken a lot of info. Frozen can slow this down, and Rops can deal with ramp. Did you see him? Rops is boosted, right? Frozen seen him. Frozen backs away, trying to remain calm under all the pressure that comes Rops down. Rops looking. Rops. attack's passed. Oh, my God. It's an opening. Frozen's now on an island. He knows these rotations are cut off. He is the only one who could stop this, and it's too late. s -Attack delivers a killing blow, and it's going to be s -Attack again. Oh. This ramp presence is monumental for Astralis this round. I think BMAS and Chris J are, are out of this now. Yeah, I want to see that one again. I want to see how exactly Rob's missed that. Because that was the beginning the of the end. Time. I, I ju he just was looking towards ladder base, so that right. one smoke was enough. What an opening right there. Esatag, the newest addition. The newest addition to this squad. Pulling off some impact frags right there. And on Rops, second highest rated player in the tournament thus far. The chase is on. Can Chris hold on to this? Their money's not great on Mal. Three targets pushing you. Yeah, and he's sent to Squalor. 2.7 for Chris J. And just like that, a quad kill from Esetag closing in on his 30 bomb. The sprightly new life injection into the Astralis roster has pulled them back into contention for this game. 
That's quite the play. That's quite the statement to be making as well. All right, check this out. This is the timing. Rops on top of the boost right here. You can see over towards the ramp position was Is that where Mage was starting to pressure? Or? It was starting to pressure towards ladder. Look at this. He's just not looking, not looking. Esetag walks past, oh. and then the opening's going to come through from this. So just the timing on that for Rops was absolutely catastrophic, and that's how they got into the round. So yeah. massive window for Esetag to find. 14-14, timeout called from Astralis. Last tactical timeout oh. used here, and they're all in from Mouse. They've invested. Rops has an AWP, and that's a big round. Astralis have broken the money of Mouse Sports late, and if they take this one, oof, Mouse are going to be working with peanuts in round 30. All the way down to the wire. Finally a map to deliver in this series. Timeout will be coming to the close, and away we go. Ort for Rops, Ort for Chris J. Double Orps are out. Two M4s are famous. Light utility. They're not working with a lot to stop the rushes here of Astralis, but back towards Yard they go. Same smoke wall being deployed. Just one man, Magus, towards that Yard to position to deal with it. And these lobby approaches from Astralis, they weren't working in the earlier stages, but now they've bought some respect. Chris towards the lower side of things. Frozen tucked in all the way towards CT spawn. Rops orping towards ramp. And that just leaves Carrigan and Beamas towards the top site to deal with any of the like, flooding honestly, NTs. Beamas just for the same position, huh? Every round. And, and I understand why. Because everything else is moving around him. You know, you need to have a couple of those pillars. And you, the fact that every time he's tested, he's at least provided what was required. Crucial round of play here. All of this hard work, 28 of these, but this one holds significantly more. Your decision-making will determine your fate. Those are good dink. Back of the head of Glaive. Dupree, however, does catch Carrick, and it's Beamus. He's always there. A flash for the repeat. He needs one, and he's found it on the flash. Fantastic. Even pre-firing, he's held safe hey. by Chris. Device trying to do something. Rops' is all fills the feed, and it's just S attack found by Frozen. Mouse Sports have got themselves series point to do it three seasons in a row. Double Ops set up being the hero for Mouse. Who would have guessed it? Chris J with the save onto Bemis. Rops has 29 kills. An absolute superstar continuing to do it here under pressure, and now Astralis. They get a their scout, buy. Dude, yeah. a scout. That's not the weapon you want. They already have the AWP on device going into this. I don't know how Magus wants to find any jewels here. Lining up the smokes is the fast L block. Device wanting to see if he can catch anybody early, but Frozen, he thinks better of this. He's going to tuck away immediately. The pressure's on. A minute 40. Can Astralis take us to OT? It's the big question on all of our minds here. And Device, we haven't seen much of this T side AWPing, let alone the T side scouting. Very passive from Frozen all the way back to spawn just to ensure that no one can cross and pressure towards that upper area. Device clearing as he goes. Lots of utility left for Astralis here. If they can get across towards... This is the, a lot of room. Yeah, but they don't have the bomb with them right now. That's been left over towards outside lobby. So with a minute left on the clock, they might need to start considering where they want to finish. I think Esetag might be tasked with going back to get that. Actually, no. In transition, Magus heading back on over. Has that Tech-9 and Scout, a weird combo to be rocking in this final round. Would you dare go to Beamus after he has oh been the most solid if of they, players? If Astralis just did one of their top work walkouts, it hasn't worked for them in a lot of their games. It's looked very, very flat. And now keep in mind, Frozen has been waiting to see if anyone would go past. Obviously, Glaive, well aware, keeps his head tucked down. Oh, what on oh, earth is Glaive. that? 30 seconds. They got a push. Carrigan tucked in on the vent. Bemis going to have to do a lot here. He's only got a single flashbang. Heaven of threat. Molly comes in. Dispatching of one. It's got overtime written all over it. 15 seconds. Not a single frag. Not a single peep out of Mouse Sports. Astralis will not let this one wrap on up neat and tidy. Regulation is not enough to split these two teams. Just rops. An AWP and a dream, five to find. It really is redundant at this point. He knows it, he feels it. Doesn't want to get shot in the back of the head. Hasn't even got his protective gloves or his safety goggles on. So he's breaking all of the legislation. All back, not quite. And Dupree confirms it. Ladies and gentlemen, we will not be able to separate Astralis 
nor will we mouse. We'll have to take a quick break before overtime. Time, ladies and gentlemen, Astralis and Mouse. It is that third map on Nuke. It looked at a 12 3 half, but this was Astralis's game to win. Mouse board in the second half have changed our mind. Is of course myself, Machine, Fun Chimpanzee, and, and they center themselves, well aware that it will all come down to these next six rounds. MR3, 16k, we're into the fray. Double ops back out Oops. as well here. Yeah, I think in overtime we start to favor Astralis and sort of the GG.bet odds is almost catching. This is the boost we highlighted. Ooh, cool. No one's going to get too caught by it. Device. Let's see how cognizant he is, he is of this. Yeah. Below it. Ooh, device. This oh my could God, be he smart. could not make with an AWP here. If he, oh, how are you going to do two of them though? One, yeah, but traded. Quickly back into it. Frozen is removed. Chris J remains. But now BMAS, an adjustment back into the same old, same old. But it worked so well. And now the timing can be just right for Magus. He does make it up. But they see by the way, the call somehow gets lost in translation. But Dupree on the trade. This is brutal and bloody, but finally taken ahead by Astralis. He missed it so well to find one there. And that's a very nice tag. He wants the second. He can't seem to find it. 
Freeze filled that gap, and looks like Rops has actually hit the shot as well. He suspects Glaive's holding that vent push, and so Carrigan backs away. They still need to plant here, Magis. With Rops' presence on the heaven, he's going to have to plant Carrigan's side. And that gives Carrigan a little bit of a chance. Oh, the flash oh. was so good, but Glaive still pulls the button. Closing the gap. Finds it. Can't even get his feet on the floor. Glaive cons confirms the strong. Let's take the first of overtime. That was really well done there by Rops to make a round out of that. The flash was fantastic. Glaive was just too cognizant of that vent push up and finding the kill blind. That closed the deal right there. The fact that he got so far out on the rafters as well shows you just the passive angles needing to be held. And this is the flash with the kill. So it was really good work from Mouseports to at least show a team effort in those yeah. dying stages. And a huge round right now as Astralis look to put two on the board in this first half of overtime. Smokes towards Yard again. I will remind you that on this half, they only managed to post three. Oh, we're missing a smoke. It's late. So just wait for it to fall as Device will then decide to pick on over and look for Chris J towards top of heaven. Hasn't been there in a few of the previous. And it's double Rops ops going. again. Yeah, so Rops is searching for information this time around. Mouseport's fed up of operating in the dark. Your heels in Rops. You've got a lot coming your way. Sees the bomb. Going to expect another for sure. Here's the shot. Plays it smart. Falls slightly deeper, but the molly buys so much time. This is great work from him, just hindering and hampering any of the pace that they may would have would have wanted here. Now, where are the others for Astralis? Oh, Carrigan, no. It's exactly what S-Attack wanted, but he still goes down. That's huge. And actually, a second smoke from the rotate of Frozen. They're playing this very well. Talking of Nuke being determined by the rotates. CT's clearing lobby. Look at the information. That means that they now know Yard That's is a, a potential threat. What? Sorry, so we've got Astralis on the CT side, right? Yeah. And Mousewood's on the T side? Basically. Uh, no, this is going to be a fun little switcheroo. I think Rops, how much vision does he have? Okay, a lot. So very aware of where the gap may reside. They've surely got to be concentrating on the top end of that ladder too. Spotted. Oh, big shot from Glaive though. Suddenly there's an opening. Chris J quickly tries to get to it. Two. It's Other a leg. tag, but they still live. Frozen. Surely he is sorted on these two. Surely he doesn't die to me. Just gone 15 HP, but he does. And now Door Carrigan. Open. No, no he's, he's going to make a spray. Oh, that's lovely from Carrigan. Denies the plan as well. No longer a playable 1v3. He's just going to have to look for frags. Device has accepted that this one is not his. He could die after time here. Yeah, over time, not the end of the world oh, here, as we will go into the third round of play. Splitting the difference 1-1. And that was fantastic work. So Rops playing a little bit more forward than what Astralis have been seeing. And this was the kill right here that sealed the deal. Uh, you would think that Esther Tag just standing and waiting, he should have that advantage. But Carrigan swinging on in and being able to avoid that headshot puts a very important round on the board here for that of Mouse. This might have a couple more twists and turns in it yet as we get back underway. AK's out, double AWP not in play for Mouse this time round. Rops is down towards the rifle. Chris J rocking the primary. The Vice with one yet again. Smokes toward Yard, same situation. Oh, Rops, you are bold, brave, CS and attack. might just have tipped the scales this round again. Information now floods through, and the map just becomes painted even bluer as Mouseports at CT side control so much territory. Carrigan's getting curious, sees a little, but loses life for it. Yeah, now they've got a lot of control, Chris. So good, but Glaive surely catches him. No, he strafes away from the spray and stands his ground to device his aim. Three on three. Caught by the red container on that Danish AWP. Rops and Beamers on the top side of the map. Frozen holding, as always, the inner. Are they going to boost rafters here? Yeah, yeah I like that. Mm. It's smart. They can take back some territory here that Astralis might think they have for free. But they're ducking down secret. Frozen's been very consistently holding this. He likes to jump peak, and he's opted for the alternative angle from Decon this time. He can do it in both sides. Don't see it all too often, but it's definitely his... Defense of choice. He's got a nade, I believe. Yeah, an incendiary. He'll be looking to deploy once he catches a glimpse. So that was it. Bye bye. And hello. Oh, okay. Just in time. Nice work. 30 He's very seconds. actively holding this. He's going to catch you free, pulling That's out nades. And that is the bomb. You're right. He catches Glaive as well. Only device. A very familiar tale. 
He's missed his shot, jumps over it. Not gonna miss the Deagle shot though. Perhaps a 1v3 in order as he grabs himself an AK, the bomb, and a potential plant. Bemis and Rock were the top side players and they've already rotated in a 17 to six half in the first overtime. MR3 16K, we can see refreshing. But you can see how refreshing it is to have a close game as well. 16-3, 16-6 for the first two maps. And a ridiculous comeback from 12-3 to Astralis. Now Sports brought us back to a level stead. Astralis just closing it and avoiding a loss in regulation. Rob's continuing to be a beast here, finding the two openings in the last two rounds there of overtime play. The AWP towards Secret and then the push towards Lobby on S attack. Really getting things started for Maus and away we go. Carrigan leading the charge, quick smokes. Beamass e as well. He's on it, he's going quick as well. Full send, now Carrigan was going quick as well, but he's been found. So far, it looks like Astralis have got the grip on this one, but the there's event. still Rops and there's still Chris J. You saw Device just find Beamass, so you understand how that scenario eventually unfolded. They will get a plan from this. And it will be a 2v3 with Molotovs and a little bit of this and that to play with. Now, on the other side, they need to find their way to come back into this perfectly. Get back into the most perfect angles oh. for Rops. Surely has a kill here. That's on a platter. And now a 2v2. This becomes so, so feasible. Oh, here's him. Audio cube made. Rops. He knows the timing so, so well. Dips back. And now Chris J losing on ramp. All on Rops now. Yeah, and that bomb's ticking away in favor of him. This frag onto S attack is everything. Smokes gap. Oh, no, the jump could cost him the round, and it does. Dupree was on the flank. Just caught the toes as he left the ground. They've got just enough time for the defuse. Rops is going to be kicking himself. That had 18 written all over it, but Astralis, they to close the gap once more. Oh, interesting. An auto sniper purchase lying at the CT spawn. Astralis getting a little flirtatious with their buys. Didn't get to use it or utilize. But we'll get ourselves into the final few rounds of this. Look like Rops had done enough. 36 frags. You can't really argue against that. On well, the end of this round, one of these teams will be on 18, and that's enough to secure a double overtime where we will do it all again. Or put themselves one round closer to locking in a match against Heroic later this evening. How much pressure. Oh, late aggression. We haven't seen that, but a one for one trade out. Somehow BMAS still pretty oh, blind. That nade's good, yeah. Good spot on that. BMAS is down to eight. Rops just took a fair bit of fight, but they still stand. They have four players alive. Yeah. And the three up against them, Dupree wants to try and tip those scales. Rops likes to hold this push from the top of the ladder. And Dupree's going up there with him. And Rops is not ready oh, for this. Oh no, the timing on Rops again. And that is enough. Carrigan has to concern himself with Dupree's location now and Beamer's so low, maybe he just has to ignore him. The bomb's in no man's land and they've lost all this territory. Even with Beamass over towards secret, being on low HP means he can't initiate any fights. Utility are plenty, but that means nothing. He's kind of just got to stay alive. He's going to double swing, yeah. Double swing with him. Oh, God. Okay, that works too. Kerrigan yeah. has found the AWPer. He knows Dupree was behind him. That's a tag tucking in to click confirm that there's no one outside. But the, look at that. Just as he leaves, Bemis has some freedom. They still need to pick up that bomb. They know there's potential for Dupree to be holding it. That's why the flashes are being used. Dupree's still passively holding lobby. They're going down secret, which is going to be completely undefended. They're playing this well. There's a chance Mouse Sports can turn this one back around on its head, despite having a four versus three advantage initially. Got a plant now, going for the safest of all. Guarded by Carrigan, who's actively opted to tuck in here. Whoa. We need some of that Inferno Carrigan to come out here. Beamass holding the cross, going to be the first port of call. Utility being used because they have some for once. Dupree cleanly removes Beamass, and it's the tag is there. It's going to be 18 for Astralis. Mouseports, Mouseports just couldn't weather the storm. Yeah, they are tucked into very all-in post-plant situations there. The two positions that BMAS and Carrigan had opted for either came from the fear that Astralis could already be in the back vents down secret or ready to cut off those rotations. That wasn't to be, and Mouse Sports, they drop a big round right here. Astralis one round away right now, locking in that rematch against Heroic later this evening. Should be that 9 p.m. start time. It will be a three hour buffer for the winner of this before they have to play the loser bracket final. And then winner of that match later this evening will take on Na'Vi in the best of five grand final tomorrow with a one map advantage for the CIS squad. 15 seconds left 
on freeze time to discuss their options. If Mouse Sports can't post another round here, it will be done and dusted. We will not be doing overtime again. And a fantastic performance here from S Attack. 31 kills for the newest addition. 27 for that of device. On the other side of things, Rops is closing in on 40. 40? <laughs> Doesn't sound like the kind of scoreline of someone that lost in their lower bracket final, but certainly reality he could be living in. Flashing high. Lave can't do much with that. He tries to, though. Jumps through. Converts it. Chris J, his flash catching Carrigan. Rops could catch Glade flank, and he does. I'll Dupree. Do oh my lord, he's got two. Not three. Chris J, keeping the round alive, keeping all of the chances for Mouse Sports alive. But this, this looks is everything. sketchy. Yeah, Rops has got two targets honing in on Lobby Clear. Doesn't want to show his barrel. Oh, Magic could get the timing on his jiggles here. He's doing intermittent checks. Most corners oh. is Device. The Deagle takes him out of the running, and now one frag separates Astralis from the uh, heroic Astralis rematch. Took us a great deal of regulation, and then some. This Jake could change our minds. 40 seconds. He's heading right back where Rops lost his life. And Device isn't expecting it. Neither of them are looking his direction. He could spot the barrel pretty quickly. Oh, if he goes. Okay. A knife. Down the vent. A knife, 25 seconds. It wasn't just one. Magus is still here. Chris J has no idea what's going on, and there it is. Sign, sealed, delivered. Magus drags Astralis, kicking and screaming across the finish line. That means someone to Astralis. The reactions alone tell you the story, and we'll tell you a little bit more when we get back from our break.